Hello everyone, welcome back to GGN. This is part two of this news bulletin for today. If you're just joining me, um, you might want to watch the first video first. I highly recommend it. Um, it'll give you a bunch of background. Um, go in there and watch it. Uh, there's two videos. The links will be posted in YouTube's video description. We're talking about terrorist Turkey and prophecies about um, what we know as Istanbul and uh, Turkey basically leaving NATO. Uh, it, but basically, people in Turkey are just going to get pissed off at their government for supporting Zionists. And uh, they're going to get dumped. And um, there's going to be a, possibly a, a, a state created by the Zionists themselves saying, oh, we poor Kurds who are getting um, uh, attacked and stuff like that or uh, by, by Turkey. Um, we're going to go ahead and aid you and help you, right? Because they're all about dumping their own, right? This is what he talked about in the last video. And in the guise of human rights, humanitarianism, like how they're trying to declare a no-fly zone like they did in Libya, um, like they're trying to do here in Syria, uh, they're going to help create this uh, proxy state for Kurdistan. So, um, also, we had, what, CIA chief leaves Turkey after one day, after basically he was briefed uh, by the West and, uh, and went back and reported to Israel. Turkey accuses Syria of state terrorism. Then you have, what, Turkish officers take command of Syrian rebel brigades now. That's right, assuming command of the Syrian terrorists because they're not getting the job done. And North Israel is put on alert, so they're on the defense. NATO will do its utmost to protect Turkey. So NATO is now getting involved, saying we got to do what we got to do. Here we go. So Israel looks to U.S. example in trying to end rift with Turkey. Israel has signaled a willingness to adopt a diplomatic language used to smooth U.S.-Pakistani relations in order to end its more than two-year-old rift with Turkey. The alliance between the Jewish state and the Muslim NATO power, a mainstay of Washington's influence, in an unstable region fell apart after Israel's navy killed nine pro-Palestinian Turkish activists who tried to breach its blockade of Gaza in May 2010. So the example is what? They're talking about Lieberman from Israel. He noted after the U.S. mistakenly killed 24 Pakistani soldiers in a drone strike, CIA drone strike, on the Afghan border, Hillary Clinton said her country was sorry for the losses suffered by the Pakistani military. Now, Washington committed to working closely with Pakistan and Afghanistan to prevent this from ever happening again. Lieberman said uh, Clinton's comments could not be called an apology, but an expression of regret of killing of the innocents. I say to you, this is the wording, or if this is the wording, if the Turks accept the American wording, <laughs> I will certainly go with it. This is what I'm willing to accept. So you're just not willing to accept the fact that they had uh, special forces um, Assad or whatever, uh, repelling onto an aid ship um, and uh, basically shooting people, right? They're not going to apologize for that. It's funny because that ship was actually there for a real humanitarian mission. Syria slams Egyptian leader's speech as interference. So look at this. Egypt now. Syria condemned on Thursday calls by Egypt's president for change in the country, which is battling a 17-month-old uprising against Assad. It's an invasion, right? Uh, it says here, saying that they amounted to blatant interference in its eternal fears. This comes uh, after the Muslim Brotherhood, which is uh, basically a Zionist proxy, comments to a meeting of an Arab minister in Cairo where a clear attack on the right of the Syrian people to choose their future by themselves without foreign interference. This is the Syrian foreign minister who says this, or said that. Uh, what Mercy said is media incitement, which aims to fuel violence in Syria. There's no different from other governments who support the armed terrorist groups with money and weapons and training and shelter, making them partners in Syria's bloodshed, the foreign ministry said. The Syrian statement said Mercy's comments reflected the views of a group that has no grasp of history shared by the Egyptian and Syrian people. With Syrian endgame in sight, now is the time to get involved. This is from Gulf News. The U.S. will have little influence with those who prevail if it remains on the sidelines. From the time of the peaceful protests in Syria turned into a Western armed terrorist uprising, it says it's been reasonable to argue that any outside intervention would do much harm as good, and he made the argument himself, but he says, but the situation on the ground has changed. And in other words, they're not winning, right? They're not getting the regime change. So the calculus of the outsiders much changed as well. So 
uh, U.S. Uh, dictator Barack Obama's regime should accept that only desirable outcome in Syria is a victory by the terrorists and should work more actively than it has both to hasten the day of victory or regime change. And I can't read any more of this because it's just pure bu bullshit, right? You have what? Is it true that Syrian forces, that com if it's true that they committed terrible atrocities in recent weeks, both in the house-to-house -house killings in Damascus, bombardment of civilians waiting in bread lines? Hmm. Well, what about the terrorists that actually bombed uh, uh, an area and blew up a bunch of civilians, then blew up the funeral and blew up the people that were trying to mourn? Hmm. Peaceful activists. How about the terrorists that dress up in uniforms and then go on there and put a show on on TV like it's some movie, like a Hollywood script movie, busting down doors and they're actually the free Syrian terrorists, not actually the army. Or dragging bodies by a rope behind the car um, in the main street to scare other people. Pinning journalists in the crossfires uh, so that they can be killed and shelled and blamed on the Syrian forces. Italy ready to intervene militarily in Syria. It would be ready uh, to send military forces to Syria if uh, Assad is toppled, Italian Defense Minister has said. And Italy has the ability to do it, even though they don't even have the ability to really take care of their own country, much like France. But they think that the international community would have to contribute. So that's basically the CFR, the uh, Council on Foreign Relations, the RAND Corporation, think tanks, uh, the big fat uh, uh, bankers, mostly Zionists, but it doesn't really matter. Um, they could be whatever, right? They're globalist. So yeah, uh, basically, people, it's, it's time to get involved now, right? So Italy's ready to go. Uh, then you have France giving aid to rebel-held Syrian cities. They started providing direct aid and money, as if they probably weren't already, to five rebel-held Syrian cities as it intensifies efforts to weaken Assad and the first move uh, by Western power. <laughs> God, that's what a fucking lie, dude. It's like, what? God, it's just it's, it's just it's crap. You watch all my videos I've covered in the last six months, and you can see I've documented one after another after another that, that what they just said was a pure lie and distortion of the truth. Ashton urges UN Security Council to back uh, Brahimi. So the EU foreign policy chief on Wednesday urged UN City, uh, Security Council to provide a new UN Arab League, another Western Zionist proxy envoy to Syria. So they're actually hosting these talks in a uh, British, again, another proxy state, uh, Cyprus, where British are actually deploying their SAS uh, from and gathering intelligence. They, uh, they said the EU fully supports uh, a mission uh, to basically, what, reduce the violence that's being created by the same groups. So the EU, NATO, all of them, they're all calling for it now, right? Uh, UK obsession with regime change responsible for Syria catastrophe. British politician speaks up against the UK Syrian policy. So it's not just the UK, it's Israel. The Foreign Secretary William Hague to the British House of Commons said or stated that uh, more death and suffering would be required to convince Russia and other nations to change their positions on Syria. So in other words, we're going to keep funding these terrorists to keep killing civilians and um, the Syrian government uh, forces uh, until you do what we want you to do. So it says here, this might answer the question as to why the U.S., U.K., France, NATO members, including Turkey and De Gulf state autocracies, have made such vigorous efforts to fund, arm, and support foreign terrorists affiliated with al-Qaeda flowing over Syria's borders throughout the, the duration of the conflict. So they're talking about this, uh, this U.N. resolution being passed in the General Assembly August 3, 2012, claiming that 133 support of the West stance with only 12 votes against. He fails to acknowledge that in addition to the 12 nations that voted firmly against the resolution, 31 nations abstained and muted protests to the resolution. Nations either firmly opposed to the resolution or refusing the vote included China, Russia, Iran, um, Cuba, Pakistan, South Africa, you can go on and read a list, uh, Brazil, Bolivia, Venezuela, I Iraq, uh, North Korea, Belarus, Nicaragua, Myanmar, and Zimbabwe. Basically, it represents nearly half the world's population. Going off what I said, if arming these terrorists for protracted violence, as is the stated goal of the Western policy papers, this is the actual cause of the humanitarian uh, catastrophe. So, Syrian minister accuses Mossad of assassinating Syrians. You don't see this in all the news, do you? Information minister criticizes Egypt President Mohamed Morsi after the later voices sympathy for the Syrian revolt. There is no difference between Mubarak and Morsi 
who has done nothing for the Palestinians and continues to sell gas to Israel. Syrian Information Minister says the rebel attacks have the fingerprints of intelligence services, including Israel's uh, Mossad. We found armed caches with the weapons used by the terrorists, and their sources was Israel. So he also uh, basically criticized Morsi, who during the non-aligned movement conference last week conveyed a sympathy to the Syrian rebels, likening their struggle to the Palestinian conflict with Israel. So stick with me here, because this is all going to get tied together. This is going to be four videos for sure today. Qatar to invest $18 billion in Egypt over the next five years. Now all of a sudden, Egypt's starting to come out and talk about uh, Syria and something must be done, right? Problem, reaction, solution. Egypt's prime minister says Qatar has agreed to invest $18 billion in Egypt over the next five years to help boost the country's ailing economy. So this is what we're talking about, these uh, autocracies, uh, Gulf states and that, that are backed by the West and Zionists. So this is a payoff, right? They got their man, they got their um, they got their Muslim Brotherhood uh, brother in there, and these funds are going to help revive the uh, Egypt's battered economy and lure back foreign investment has all but disappeared since last year's uprising. So it's a puppet state. And I guess that's what uh, she was talking about as far as the Pied Piper. Egypt requests $4.8 billion loan from visiting IMF chiefs. They're getting money from the IMF. They asked the IMF for $4.8 billion loan to help revive its struggling economy. Egypt's central bank sells 513 million euros of T-bills from uh, August 28th. I've had these been the articles have just been stacking up. That's why I'm tying them all together here. It was the first time the central bank sold euro T-bills in November, introduced T-bills denominated in U.S. dollars, and has sold 5.83 billion of those bills in six auctions so far. The central bank noted the level of demand from foreign investment. The human Rights Watch, Human Rights Watch, urges Egypt to increase forces in the Sinai over migrants, humanitarianism. They called on the Egyptian government to increase the presence of security forces in the Sinai Peninsula to end human trafficking in the, in the desert. But what do we know? The Human Rights Watch, another Zionist tool to mislead public opinion, the official sponsor of the Zionist massacres. Most of the people think that Human Rights Watch is a non-profit, 100% independent organization. They also believe its aim is to defend and protect humans. Remember this article, CIA chief leaves Turkey after one day visit, and one of the things he was talking about was monitoring developments in neighboring Iran and Iraq. Iraq's role in Syria war poses problems for the U.S. So they're allowing Iranian weapons to be delivered to the Syrian regime. So they basically said the Iraqi government that was only for humanitarian aid. So. It's a big business. I mean, this, this is a government after all of Iraq. I doubt that they didn't get what they wanted. So they got the leaders that they wanted. And um, and now they're going to bring the weapons in. So it's all big business. And it's just sad because so many freaking people got to die for it. Iraq, the latest dragged into Syria proxy war, influences a buyer's market in Syria. And while nations like Russia and Iran continue to back the existing regime, there are no shortage of other nations from NATO uh, to others looking to throw money and arms behind the rebels in hopes of eventually installing their own bought and paid for allies in Damascus. Now Iraq is suddenly finding itself accused of backing Assad, who they've never particularly cared for in the first place. The U.S. puppet state of Iraq installed in a bloody decade of war, the Maliki government is pushing for some actual evidence to back up the allegations. In regards to Turkey, it's a tough thing for them to get all provocative about calling Syria a terrorist state with a straight face, as even today they launch airstrikes against rebel targets inside their own nation as part of a civil war against ethnic Kurds that's been going on for 30 years. Then September 3rd, 29 Turkish security officers have been killed, clashes with Kurd militants near the border with Syria. It took place in the southeastern border with Syria and Iraq. I remember, we were just talking about uh, the tra terrorist transnational uh, superhighway running from North Africa via the Arab Spring and Libya and all that, and running right up through here, right? This is what we're talking about. And a nice little uh, uh, pathway to Russia and the Caucasus and Central Asia. And by accident, a grenade blows up 25 Turkish soldiers. 2,000 soldiers are involved in an operation where Turkish jets hit Syrian militant areas. And the increase in attacks between the Turks and the Kurds is synonymous with what? The attacks with the Chechen Western-backed terrorists on, Russia, on Russia's doorstep. And now that the Assad regime is severely weakened, Syrian Kurds demand more rights. Another Zionist proxy state, maybe? 
Thank you.